So let's go ahead and turn our attention now to campaign 2016. Both Dems and Republicans are focusing on New York now with the state and the second most delegates up for grabs behind California. On the Democratic side, the campaign tone seems to be getting more and more negative by the day, while on the Republican side, Ted Cruz is attempting to spin his attacks on New York values. Enter KCAL 9 political reporter Dave Bryan. He joins us now to recap the day on the campaign trail, which included pretty heated confrontation for Bill Clinton at a rally that got pretty tense. Yeah, right? we're, we're going to see that in just yeah. a moment. He was uh, he was on fire. I he mean, was. things things got pretty wild. But the Democratic tone in general, there were plenty of fireworks today. That's a big change. The sparks are flying on both sides tonight. Ted Cruz, who roughed up Donald Trump in Wisconsin, has now become the target of attacks in New York, where he's buried in the polls. And the Democrats are slamming each other on the issue of who's qualified to be president. I don't believe that she is qualified. In the last 24 hours, the tone of the Democratic presidential campaign has taken on a harshness that led some to think they were listening to the Republican candidates. Maybe the American people might wonder about your qualifications, Madam Secretary. I don't know why he's saying that, but I will take Bernie Sanders over Donald Trump or Ted Cruz anytime. Faint praise for a Democrat. Clinton supporters charge Sanders has gone too far, like Senator Claire McCaskill, who tweeted, come on, Bernie, not qualified? Remember what we all have to do together in November. Asked about why the escalation, Sanders told reporters he was merely responding in kind. Because the Washington Post had a headline which said, quote, Clinton questions whether Sanders is qualified to be president, end of quote. That was what was thrown at me. Clinton never actually said Sanders isn't qualified, but in an interview with Charlie Rose on the CBS Evening News, Sanders put it this way. I thought it was appropriate to respond. But is it tit for tat? Is that what I, this campaign conversation ought to be about? No, it certainly should not be. But what I do have to say, Charlie, you know, if we are getting attacked uh, every single day uh, by the Clinton campaign, I want them to know we're going to respond uh, in kind, but I hope that we do not uh, do have that Do you confidence. believe Secretary Clinton is unqualified to be president? Well, does Secretary Clinton believe that I am unqualified to be but president? But why can't you simply say yes, she has some of the, a, a first-rate resume. You're right. We should not get into this tit-for-tat. We should be debating the issues facing the American people. All I am saying is that people are going to attack us if they're going to distort our record, as has been the case time and time again, we're going to respond. This is all about the upcoming New York primary with hundreds of delegates up for grabs. And the latest CBS tracking poll shows Clinton leading Sanders by 10 points in a state they both probably have to win. Clinton abandoned her motorcade in New York to ride the subway after having some trouble getting the fare card to work. Clinton's subway photo op lasted for nine blocks in the Bronx. It's so convenient. It is just the best way to get around. And while Hillary Clinton campaigned in the Big Apple, former President Bill Clinton got pretty fired up, too, defending her and himself when Black Lives Matter demonstrators interrupted the event, protesting a 1994 anti-crime bill, which they charged targeted minorities. We had a 46 year low in the deaths of people by gun violence. And who you think those lives were that mattered? Whose lives were saved that matter? You are defending the people who kill the lives you say matter. Tell the truth. It's great to be home. This is home. It's great to be home. On the Republican side of the street, Donald Trump has a huge lead in the New York polls and is trying to sweep the 95 delegates up for grabs, with Ted Cruz running a distant third in those polls. Cruz, who ripped Trump's so-called New York values when addressing receptive crowds in the Deep South primaries, is now under fire from Trump having arrived in New York. And I've got this guy standing over there looking at me, talking about New York values with scorn in his face, with hatred with hatred of New York. Cruz says New York values are not conservative values and Trump has them. Our friends in the media are very comfortable with a New York liberal who has supported Andrew Cuomo and Hillary Clinton and Chuck Schumer for decades. Trump did get support from former New York Mayor Rudy Giuliani who said he'll vote for Trump. But Cruz's front page reception from the New York Daily News was not so neighborly. And a new video ad from a John Kasich friendly super PAC campaign is driving the message home. New Yorkers aren't stupid, Ted. Now you come here and conveniently say you love New York. Forget about it, Ted. 
Well, so intense is the battle in New York that Donald Trump, who, as we mentioned, is sitting on a huge lead of about 25 points in the latest poll this week in New York, canceled a news conference he has scheduled here in Southern California tomorrow, and he canceled an event in Colorado as well because he wants to focus his time and energy on New York. Jeff, Lena? Yeah, did that uh, just say forget about it, Ted? Like forget, forget about it. Forget about it. Yeah. it was <laughs> New York, right? <laughs> yeah, well, there you go. What's kind of interesting is, is uh, Trump is uh, really pulling quite well in New York, his home state, of course. So with that lead, why would he cancel his event scheduled for tomorrow here in California, you think? Well, he's not worried about losing New York. I mean, that, that's, that would be the long shot of all long shots. But there is something else going on. Here's what I think is happening. Under the primary rules in New York, if a candidate gets over 50% of the vote, he or she is awarded three delegates for every congressional district they win. If the primary winner doesn't get over 50% of the vote, they get two delegates for each congressional district they win, and the second place finisher in each district gets one delegate. I'm sorry, I know that's a little complicated, but Trump is going for the kill in New York. That's what this means. The polls show him getting 50% of the vote, and if he can stay at that level, he could sweep all 95 Republican delegates there or come pretty close to it in New York, and that would be a powerful victory with a strong message, Jeff.